Welcome back. On today's Dungeon Design Drive-By, we'll take a look at Act 1 of a one-shot I like to call Sphinx Gate. I'm Mark William, and you're watching Drive-By D&D. An old wizard, Star Spinner, sent your party to a town called Gate Town, whose claim to fame is having been built around an ancient, mysterious structure called Sphinx Gate. No one knows its purpose, but Star Spinner suspects there is a way to reopen the gate and has sent you to learn all you can about the historical monument and possibly a way to reopen it. Upon entering Gate Town's town square, you immediately see people milling about dressed in fine clothes, shops, stalls, markets, artisans and games, balloons, pennants, laughter and cheer, buying, selling and trading. The crowd is composed of an assortment of different races from all over the world. Gate Town truly is the hottest hotspot in the land. Okay, so that was the setup for scene one, vendors, spenders, and money lenders. Remember, if you caught my last episode of Dungeon Design Drive-By, every scene is broken up into setup, twist, and lead. So the purpose of the setup is basically to get them acclimatized to this town. This is more of a high fantasy adventure too, so that's another note you want to make, so feel free as you're describing to add little details like there's, you know, maybe floating lanterns, lots of magic in the area, just, you know, clean streets, really elaborately cool buildings, you know, I've even had the idea, whoa, of, you know, like there could be magic doors that go to who knows where, maybe it's just like a magic door shop that they could go into, just to really hammer home that high fantasy feel. So why am I doing this? Well again, I want the players to come to this town and really hammer home the idea that Gate Town is, its, its economy is built on tourism about Sphinx Gate, this thing that is basically just like an old historical monument. So there's lots of different people here, there's lots of shops, there's lots of trading, good times, cheer, different games. And you would take the opportunity maybe to, you know, use an NPC as a tour guide. I'm gonna call mine Alexa, who is going to meet the party and answer any questions they have, welcome them as if they're like any other tourists. So tell them a little bit about the different shops going on. They can basically use her um, to find information about, you know, the Sphinx Gate or any of the different shops. So she'll tell them that each of the shops have different things. You know, there'll be a potion shop, a blacksmith, just different types of shops that the players can then visit to. And the idea is that at each shop, they have an opportunity to gain maybe cool items. Maybe they want to switch up their weapons at the blacksmith. Maybe he actually has some um, rare magic items, or maybe someone has some potions that they can get to help them on their journey. So this is a little bit of don't hold back, Give them everything, give them some cool things to start. It is a one shot. I don't want to hold back on items or potions or things to help them on their quest. So give them that chance. So after they've kind of, you know, investigated a little bit, explored, socialized, got to know the town, maybe learned some rumors, you're going to hit them with the twist to get them back on track. So with my twists, I like that I can implement them whenever I feel like the game is dragging or whenever I feel that players don't know what to do. Or again, maybe they are visiting every shop and getting too powerful. So maybe they, they will only visit a couple shops, gain a few items, and then you're gonna hit them with the twist, which is coming up next. While you are enjoying all the merriment of Gate Town's festivities, a man appears and stands on a crate. His raspy voice cuts through the air. It sounds like he is talking about the Sphinx Gate. He is robed in ragged white cloth, is loud, and looks almost like a poor preacher. Was he playing a role? It's hard to tell, but a crowd has gathered around him nonetheless and are listening intently. Also, you notice guards cautiously moving towards the spectacle. Okay, so again, when you felt ready, you dropped the twist. The preacher, this guy who seemingly comes into nowhere, looks totally out of place. He's not dressed in fine clothes. He looks like a beggar person who's kind of ranting and raving. People are going towards him. And hopefully the idea is that, you know, they hear something of the Sphinx gate. So remember, Star Spinner sent them here for that purpose. So they should be attracted to join the group, hopefully. Now, remember, Alexa is there. 
So maybe they're gonna ask, like, I'm hoping that they're wondering, is this a show? Is this not a show? Is this person not supposed to be here? And that's why you kind of hint that the guards are moving over there. So they could ask Alexa if it's a show or whatnot, and she would tell them that it's a show. But my hope is that maybe they kind of forget about Alexa, or maybe they don't even really talk to Alexa, they just kind of go on their own, and they show up so that eventually when the, the um, preacher is done speaking, so hopefully they'll learn a few facts about the Sphinx Gate. And in particular, they're going to learn about dun, 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 the riddle that's been kind of carved into stone and no one's been able to solve it. It's on this placard and it's about this like warrior statue that's frozen in time in front of this huge Sphinx, Sphinx gate. So once they get even just that tidbit, you are going to move the guards in and they're going to basically silence this person as if... You know, this guy's not supposed to be speaking, but again, it's all part of the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's all part of the tourist attractions of Gate Town, and basically it was like a, you know, a mummer's farce. So, through this poor preacher, they are going to learn the lead, which is the riddle on the wall. That should be their next step, and we're going to talk about that next. After learning of the riddle, you approach the stone wall. You see a strange language carved in the stone. It's not glowing, and it looks hand carved. The wizard in your party is able to read it. A statue stands to guard the path, a sword, a spell, a wicked lie. All three must strike to find the fight. Okay, so thus far, your players have experienced the setup, they know about this town, it's a tourist town, they visited some different shops, maybe gained some cool bonus items, and now have like just watched that little show with the poor preacher who was the twist, and he gives them the lead, which is really go to the riddle that's on this stone wall. Now, again, maybe through the portion before this, maybe they, they did look at the wall already, and that's why I would make it a language that none of the party players can speak so then again um, they have to figure out a way to solve it or again maybe Alexa can read the language and she knows about the town um, or again if they go for it and can solve it right away then just don't even include the twist with the preacher um, just if they solve it they solve it so again you need to be open to things that are going to change but hopefully if it goes in that order, they will then um, get to the riddle. And so basically a statue stands to guard the path, a sword, a spell, a wicked lie. All three must strike to find the fight. So of course this isn't, this isn't that difficult of a riddle. You can make the riddle as hard or as easy as you want. But I like the idea of kind of framing the riddle around getting each of the player's classes involved in sort of a fun way. So in this case, I have a rogue and a warrior and a wizard. So to solve the riddle, basically, you know, the warrior needs to strike the statue with a sword. <laughs> the wizard needs to cast a spell or a cantrip on the statue. And my rogue here, he has to come up with more of a creative thing, he, a little bit of fun. Um, he has to tell a lie to the statue or something of that sort. So once they sign, hopefully they figure that out and they can, they will simultaneously do it. And at that point, basically the statue will crumble and become, you know, a giant warrior, basically a guardian, guardian, guarding the Sphinx gate. So at this moment, that's when like people are just running for their lives, basically like the guards, everyone, like make sure you just have you tell them like everyone's scattering like this is scary this is like yes it's a high fantasy world but this has been something that no one knew about for so long no one could solve the riddle except of course your smart intelligent party so basically everyone's gonna run like hell if you want maybe a guard or two steps back or again i even put this cool figure out there like maybe he is a warrior who was trying to figure it out if you um think they're losing or something like that so you can make some decisions like that on the fly but hopefully it's just a three on one fight. I would give the warrior or the stone statue, like, you know, depending on the level of your players, maybe ogre stats or 
giant stats or just make up your own stats for it to basically challenge the party and the fight will ensue. So hopefully now this town that they've enjoyed and um, got to know has now turned into basically a battlefield. So again, from peace to chaos is kind of what's going to happen at this, at, um, from all of this. But then hopefully the players will succeed as they always tend to do. And the minute the statue kind of crumbles into dust, they kill it. It's true. Maybe people have been watching from the outskirts. Maybe people are like coming back now once he's done. You can add all that flavor in as you see fit. But basically the minute the, uh, the statue crumbles, all of a sudden, you know, magical swirls of energy and you know, a portal is revealed, the gate opens this mysterious gate this, this force and basically the players will hopefully step through that now again maybe some of them are going to say well we should go report this back to old wizard star spinner but again maybe you can use your own creativity to guide them through the gate or maybe star spinner appears as a different floating icon. He communicates with them tele telepathically and says like, hey, like, good job. <laughs> now go through the gate, find out what's on the other side and get back to me. So again, you kind of have to be a little bit on your toes with this, but the players will then go through the gate. And basically, that's the end of act one, scene one. We'll find out what happens in act two, scene one next time. And I call that the Wall of Unforgiving Height. So we're gonna take a look at that next Dungeon Design Drive-By. So as always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy what I'm talking about. Hopefully you can find a place at it at your table or again, borrow different ideas. Of course, I'm always borrowing, at, borrowing ideas from everyone I've learned in this D&D um, &D community. So this is my little spin on it. And if you did like the video, um, please like it, subscribe, leave comments, feedback. I love hearing, I love talking about D&D. &D, so make sure to do that. And until next time, remember, all D&D, &D, all day long, all night till dawn.